when I see people optimize, sometimes they just optimize one little bit. They say, oh, my sales process is broken. So they'll re-engineer their sales process and maybe their salespeople start making big, bold promises on uh, what they're going to deliver and you know all of these different things and bonuses that they're going to add in and maybe they discount the price. And yes, that might increase your conversion rate, but maybe it has other problems further down the line, unintended when it comes to operations. And you know, maybe now the salesperson has over-promised what the operations team can do. And now the satisfaction goes down, the clients don't come back, so we're reducing the lifetime value of the client. Even though we saw a win in the sales process, it affected something further down the line. So that's why we need to get numbers across the business so that we can start to think as we optimise about your organisation as a whole and when we make a change over here just to make sure that doesn't shake things up too heavily elsewhere. The key is that you, you figure out what your numbers are, the, these key metrics, and then you need to create a system and process to get them updated regularly and that needs to happen consistently without you as the business owner doing it. So if you don't have any numbers in place, a good place to start is just to pull numbers from the critical client flow. I'm only going to spend a few minutes on this because some people already have dashboards in place. I know through scaling up, they talk about dashboards and scorecards, so you can look into that. But if you don't yet have something in place, pull numbers from the critical client flow because we know if you improve the critical client flow, then you're going to see improvements in the business because it's the central product or service that you sell. So you can see my critical client flow on the side there. Some numbers that you might pull from this is the number of leads. How many leads are you getting on a monthly basis? How many sales are you making from those? What is the average dollar sale for that particular um, you know, if, if you need to focus on something, I mean, you might start off with um, the central product or service, or if you know your numbers globally in your business, you know, you can populate your average dollar sale across all of your product line. What is the average cost of goods for you to actually deliver that product or service, and how many people either repeat or get referred back to the business, depending, like, they're, they're just numbers taken straight from the critical client flow. It's a good place to start. Uh, and then you would just populate those and then we can actually start to uh, pull derivative numbers from that. Those, those key metrics that I just gave you, there's probably four or five of them. You can then you know, combine your, your sales and your leads to figure out, uh, divide your, 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 your sales by your leads and you can figure out what your conversion rate is. But just spend a few moments. If, you, if you're not quite sure, just guesstimate. How many leads do you think you're getting every single month? How many sales are you making? What is the average dollar sale? How much does it cost you to deliver that product or service? And how many people are coming back? Or if you don't have a business that gets repeat business, how many of those people are actually referring business? And just do that on a monthly basis. This is just to get something in place. Uh, this is the Google Doc uh, of, of what this could look like. Basically, this enables you to capture the numbers and you would start to get team members to be populating these numbers just so you get a pulse on the business. And then the key is to just create a system off the back of that to get your team regularly updating that. So this is, there's a, a regular spreadsheet that our finance department fills out and we just have a system that then gets delegated through to, to Sally and then she's populating that. So when we have our department meetings, like we'll have, you know, a marketing meeting or we'll have a finance meeting. We usually have some numbers that we look at at the start of each of those meetings before we then kind of move in and start discussing any issues or things that have popped up since the last meeting. I do feel like when we move into optimization as well, I try and keep this idea of optimization as lean as, as, or, or as simple as possible because Six Sigma and lean work well for very large businesses, but the, the approach I'm going to give you works probably a lot better for smaller scale businesses, and, and I'd say sort of small to medium size, where we don't need to test out, you know, uh, hypotheses and, and try and test whether or not um, we can have a marked improvement. I just 
figure out what problems are going on in the business. Let's discuss a solution amongst the team. Let's implement it. Let's have a metric that we keep an eye on just to see whether or not it creates the desired outcome. And if it, you know, we'll, we'll measure that. If it doesn't create the desired outcome, we just it circles back around as another issue and we have another discussion to see if we can come up with a solution.